effect of testing on latest metallic testing webinar. Okay, uh, the objective of this webinar, upon completion of this webinar, participants will be able to differentiate between stress rate and strain rate, understand the type of strain rate control method, selection of strain rate for the appropriate application. And then number four is strain rate for material stress strain region. Then number five, more repeatable and comparable results. Test results reliable from machine to machine. Uh, speaker and committees, uh, together we have Mr. Empoi Sang, the founder of GT Instruments and Berhad. This is our reference and also partners uh, for our ISO 7025 uh, interlaboratory. So we have been working together with Mr. Ng uh, for many years. Then with myself, Mr. Uh, Muhammad Shabir Harun, I'm a senior executive in Centralized Antiquity Laboratory. And also uh, Mr. Johan Ari B. Muhammad, lead technologist from Centralized Analytical Laboratory. Okay, then uh, this is the speed of testing according to STM E8 slash E8M 2022. Uh, 7.6 speed of testing, 6.1.2. Speed of testing might, may be defined in terms of A, rate of straining of the specimen, rate of stressing of the specimen, C, crosshead speed, D, <coughs> the elapsed time for com completing part or all of the test, or E, free running crosshead speed, which is a rate of movement of the crosshead of the testing machine. So this one, uh, I pass to Mr. Johan. Jo. Okay. Assalamualaikum, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to our moderator, Mr. Mr. Shairul Harun. And thank you so much for all to for joining this calm webinar today. Okay, my name is Johan Arif Muhammad, uh, person in charge for Universal Testing Machine. The short form is UTM. Okay, uh, I've been working with ETP for almost more than 20 years. So we have different type of uh, universal testing machine, which you can see is uh, the figure one is UTM 100 kilonewton with the capacity of 100 kilonewton. The second one is UTM 50 kilonewton. We have another one UTM 200 kilonewton and then this one is UTM 1000 kilonewton and then we have another one is uh, dynamic actuator 500 km. Okay, so, so, so you so, have this one uh, mode 1000 km is more on concrete, right? Yes, the, this is more on industry sample for 1000 km, is more for industry sample. Okay, yeah, I shift to the next page. So, okay. what okay, that uh, normally the type of sample we, we will do for testing is my steel, copper galvanized aluminium concrete and also polymer all testing is uh, uh, come from undergraduate studies postgraduate and research projects such as petronas and external testing uh. most of our utm can do tensile uh, bending flexural compression and fatigue or cyclic testing for your information, normally we store our sample in drying cabinet, which is you in this figure five. Okay, we put it in the drying cabinet. According to STM D1618-2021, all plastic samples such as polymer need to be stored in drying cabinet for 23 degrees Celsius and 50% of humidity and need to be stored for almost uh, 48 hours before we do the testing. Okay, so, that's all, Mr. Sharon. Yeah, okay, thank you, Mr. Johan. So, this is a requirement uh, for a sample plastic STM D638 uh, version 2022. So, uh, okay, before we I hand over to Mr. Earl, so this is uh, an example of tensile test testing. Right, uh, this is the video before it broken.
right? So we can see the sample already broken. Before it broken, we can see the uh, necking process, right? Uh, so now uh, I pass to Mr. Ng uh, for the uh, our type topics on effect of test rate on latest metallic tension testing. Mr. Ng, are you ready? Yep. Thank you very much. Let me share. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Right, clear. It's clear, Mr. L. Okay, thank you very much. I think we can start. Actually, uh, my to today topic is actually effect of strain rate on metallic tension testings. Okay, before we start on, actually, my name is actually BS Ngo, first as called BS, and I'm from GT Group Company. It was a pleasure that I'm here to share the effect on the strain rate of metallic uh, tension test. And let us welcome you all here uh, from the GT Cal and also the GT and join this exchange. Okay, um, starting on the metallic testing, I think most of the time we are talking about tension test, which is actually a form of important elements. I think most of the time is talking about quality control and quality assurance. Sometimes we're just talking about parts of the outcome. Okay. And but very important that you have to know the good quality insurance program, it depends on the capability of test system to provide precise and accurate results. Just like we are doing research, we are talking about true value. That's why it's very important that we have to ensure the uh, you know the testing uh, parameters are correctly. And that's how we come to about the qualities of quality insurance uh, for this case. And we move forward again, you can see intention test is one of the most common and critical engineering tests where used in the metallic material that obtain the mechanical properties. Right? And you can see this is the best example. Normally, what you do, I guess, I think, thank you, just Mr. Sharon, share a video. This is how they are very common uh, metallic testing. And you can see this folder as well. And as we as all will know that uh, the strain rate affect the tensile behavior of properties. For example, you affect the tensile, the use strain, the strain that you have some force, fractures, and also the test time. That is uh, that is actually is a big effect. We are talking about properties, uh, mechanical properties. And this is how we are talking about the uh, and the mean, meaning the, for this section is very big, uh, is actually we are talking about tangent test revisions. There has been revision in the uh, international standards uh, for metallic test materials. The common method, for example, ISO 6692 and there's the EA. Okay, you can see bottom there's actually um, 6692 test one. Actually, we are referring to the ambient test, and this is actually 2019. And Thank you very much, also, Mr. Sauer. I mentioned that the uh, ASTM E8 has been come up 2022, and my one is still 2021. I don't have. I, have, I will check through what will be the uh, changes in 2022. Uh, anyway, for this case, for my this um, presentation, actually we have to focus on 6692 for this case uh, because uh, they don't confuse. Basically, they are quite identical. Uh, only thing the term as well are different. OK, go back to my screen. You can see according to 6692, there are two control methods. There are two control methods. What are they? First thing we are talking about, method A. Method A actually referring to strain rate, OK? The strain rate. Huh? And then they have actually method P, because talking about stress rate. And what is this two? Strain, as you know, that is actually kind of the location or but I mean based on percentage per minute or per second. Huh? Or stress rate is based on the force. And again, for this stream rate, we are talking about method A. They again, they have two different types. What are the two different types? Is they have A1. A1 is actually, they are referring to the feedback from the accessometers, meaning that the control is from the accessometers. It's not coming to the cost head and so on. It's actually from the accessometers. And the A2 is actually open loop involved on control of the estimate strain rate over the parallel line. This is the short form that you can, you can see easily. A1 is actually, you can see that the accessometer actually attached on the specimen. And the control actually from the accessometer, you are talking, refer to method A1. Huh? 
And you're talking about if you refer to method A2, is actually their control based on the machine cross head. Okay, the cross head now, where even you attach and section and so on, they won't control because they actually control from the cross head. And we are talking of method B, which is actually we are talking of force. Actually, they are referring to sensors. Actually, it's full group control. The whole control is based on force. Oh, all stress is divided by the radius. And this is the basic term you can actually get. You can identify this from this graph or this tree. Then first, you have to know first, okay? Uh, two methods, method A and method B. And in method A, they consist of A1 and A2. That's why we have to know very clear which is what we are going to use. Because if you do not clear on this part, then you're very confused on this part. Okay, then move, go, uh, move forward. And we are talking about stress rate. Um, why my topic, we are talking about strain rate, right? Okay, I'll try to explain. Why stress rate control? You can see the test uh, uh, using stresses uh, uh, for certain materials where even the standards I've mentioned very clear. This is actually not recommended using stress rate because <coughs> the stress rate that uh, you're given continue running. Okay, you continue running. From this graph, you can see we continue running on if the sample with U phenomenon uh, or use U characteristics, this will have an issue. Okay. Why is it as true? As you can see this line, being the load up to the REH or maximum uh, uh, upper U strength, and because you are using stress rate, you are you are coming into a what you call it, a server control where the system will keep on asking, okay, your load is not controlling, you still increasing, but actually in terms on the materials, they would increase anymore. They only increase on their strength. The load will not increase. If you are still using the stress rate, they will cause acceleration. They mean you cause the super high speed, then you get a different result. This is what we have mentioned in the statement that we only you use stress, stress rate, you see only up to max upper U strength, okay, REH, then you have to change to cross head, or else you have acceleration on your speed. This is actually in practical wise, actually strain rate. Uh, after the use strain, you can see the red color where I mark. Once you reach the REH, the first point, the first load, then you have to immediately change the strain rate, or using cross to control, or using the free run cross to control in order to, to obtain the REM, or lower use strain, or YPE. Yeah? That is how you want to determine. Okay? That is very important. That's why the stress rate for this case. Okay, for this case, according to 6692, the method A is intended to minimize the variation of test rate during the movement when strain rate sensitive parameters. And also they are very mentioned very clearly in 6692-1, test method that came to use strain rate control in future revision, meaning that they're very likely the stress rate will be removed. Very likely will be removed because there is a because that's how the reason and they have uh, some difficulties. Uh, there's a there's a right reason. This statement are very clear. Six six nine two test method recommended that the use of strain rate control in future revision. This is actually clearly stated in 2019 version. And therefore, and the out of fact that the strain rate of the material is unknown, also they also said recommend using the strain rate. That's how we are talking about. For this case, we are referring to strain rate. Okay, this is my recommendation by 6692. And the cost effect is actually an appropriate strain rate. Now come back to the strain rate again. Just now we are talking about strain. Why we don't use stress rate? And why we are talking about strain rate? No? And strain rate actually benefit in the uh, in doing the deformation. You know the sample extension and so on. No? They have a various sort of rate and directions have been learned. That's how actually uh, on the standard they cover various of the strain rate. What to be used? Okay, that is actually my topic could come in is actually the effect of the strain rate on metallic testing. Testings, huh? And this is what we have to call, we have to work up the study and we are doing some research. What is the cost effect on the uh, using different rate? This is the, uh, the, the main purpose of this uh, conference uh, for this five year. Okay. In uh, metallic testing uh, characteristics, basically there are two types, uh, two common stress strain curve. Uh. First one, we call it a U, 
phenomenon. Meaning that they have a U characteristics. You can see there's I E H, I E L, and so on. This is quite a common type of materials where if they have a U phenomenon, and that is a ray. It's coming in. You can see on the right hand side, they are showing the stress rate. If you're using this U phenomenon, they are allowed to use a stress rate which is six to sixty. Okay, but there's a condition that you must be more than one hundred fifty thousand MPa. Okay. And if all, you can use a strain rate. That's why they have two types you can select if you have, if the sample with U, okay, all with U characteristics, then you can use this strain rate. What happens is without U, okay, without U, material doesn't read you, look at the graph, then the only allow is only using the strain rate, where stress rate is not, doesn't appear, and it's not recommended. And you can notice that, huh? They have a clearly indicated what is the rate to be used for IEH determine the U point and IEL and RO or the tensile of strength or elongation of fractures. Okay, that is actually the very general and for the latest ISO 6692-1 2019, 2019 version. Yeah, okay, common uh, two time materials that try to resist and this is the recommended one. But for me, I will try to achieve more detail. More detail. More detail. Sorry. We are looking at this one. Okay. If sample without U phenomena, and this is the graph, you can see this is the one. Because I have mentioned that they have two different rates. Okay. As a standard mention, very clear. And the V1, okay, you can see the V1 and V3 are used for this case. And then I'm using A1. As I mentioned just now, A1 is actually using strain rate control. You're using accessory to control the, you mean the speed, huh? you're actually using strain rate control, which is until the upper U point, all proof strength is obtained. Huh? And this is the first rate we are going to use. And what is break rate? The standard is given two standards, uh, two rate. One is actually 0 0.03 times 10 power of negative three, okay? And the total is actually 20%, okay, plus minus 20%. You have to make sure that control, meaning that you 20%, you have to be server control. Make sure it's actually the load that consistent. And they have a range two, they are not range two again, then there will be 0 0.25 10 power of negative three uh, per second, plus minus 20 per, uh, 20%. And this is actually recommended by the standard, which is actually common materials uh, uh, for using the range two. And A range one is actually you can be used if the sample are very rigid or very short extension. Then you can use a range one. Or else you the range two is actually recommended for the first part, which is you can see from the graph V1. Okay, V1. You're going to use a V1. And V2, you will notice that they become using the predicted predicted strain, which is using ELC. Yeah? And this is no longer using the accessometer control there, you were using the cross head control on parallel line, on the parallel line, which they have the uh, different rate again. They have range two, range three, and range four, okay? This is the that range four. Again, you can see the sample, you have to change the speed. After one, you obtain the U strength, then you have to change the speed, which is, you can look at this graph, and if you want to get about, People will always notice, you know, they always ask the question, when are going to change to it? Uh, when are going to change uh, from A1 to A2? Then you have to come back, to, you have to ask yourself, if I, my proof strength, because the research, 0 0.2 proof strength is quite common in most of cases, but some other resource they might use more, okay? They might want to go say, I cannot get a 0 0.5 or 0 0.8 or even 1%. Oh, it's no, it's obsolete, fine, it's not an issue. If you say you want to talk about, I want to obtain my proof strength, various proof strength from 0 0.2, 0 0.1 up to 0 0.5, then it's fine. But your change rate from A1 to V1 to V3, you have to be set to, you know, from V1 to V3, you have to set after 0 0.5. If you want to get 0.5% of proof strength, don't change before the, uh, the range that you want to use. You will get my point. Meaning that for this case, my study for this, uh, I share my uh, this data. I will change my strain rate at 0 0.3 because I only take one value, which is 0.2%. That's why my change rate will be at 
0.3%. Then I won't change at 0 0.2. Why? Because when you come to 0 0.2, you suddenly change. The result that you're going to get will be different. Or bear in mind, you want to get the value for the uh, post strength. Don't change. You have to give certain allowance time for them or certain extension or strain. You know, you have to be over in order for you to get accurate strain rate. That's why for this case, I'm getting for this graph, I'm getting 0 0.2. And I change it at 0.3% for my case. Huh? Okay, for your case, you have to determine, you have to tell yourself what is your process. This is for the uh, sample that we you, uh, we you, uh, sample with you, uh, without you, sorry, without you. And second, actually, with you, if the sample with you, you can look at this, this sample. This is a graph, typical metric that uh, tends out, material characteristics, where you can see they have upper you, all right? This case will be a little bit more complicated. Why? Okay, they allow. And for this case, I'm also using the strain rate. I don't use a stress rate. And of course, for this case, you can use stress rate if you want to. But as I mentioned, when you reach the, the first point, the use strength, the upper use at REH, you have to change to change to a strain rate. Okay, don't you cannot use strain stress rate anymore. That's why for this case, I'm focused on the strain rate. You can see, notice that huh? A1, which is V1. Huh? I'm using the using the accessometer control. Okay, what is the range? They have two range. Okay, range one and range two. Okay, and when you come to V two, when I want to determine the R E L or upper U lower uh, lower U point or R E L, where I have to change another speed again, there will be changed to cross head control. You cannot use the strain uh, the accessometer control. You have to change to parallel path. Okay, you have to change to parallel path, which is actually they have a range two and three. All right, you can change, you can select anyone, but different with ELE -E, uh, and ELC. When you come to V3, which is after your EREL -E lower load, then in V3, we have to change another speed again for this case, which is actually V3. Then they have another range of range two, range three, and range four. Because as if for for V3, actually our in purpose is actually to determine the used up uh, tensile strength or elongation of fracture or reduction of area. That's why they have they can go a little bit faster. You can see the speed that uh, you change much more faster as compared with the, the IEL. Okay? okay, this is the one how you determine using the uh, the range selections of the strain rate selection, either the ELE or accessometer meter control or using the classic control, which is called limit at ELC. Okay, that is the range that you can select. And move forward again, you can see method of A2, if you are using method of two, the machine stiffness. Okay. If you, you want to use a control method A2, which is using the classic control according to A S uh, the ISO 6652, you got to determine the machine stiffness because you actually determine on the total parallel length. Huh? And that is the thing is we look at this graph. We are actually interested for the uh, CP, whatever value from this specimen, not the machines, uh, uh, you know, the error from the chain. This is why machine stiffness, huh? meaning that the stiffness is not more than 1%. What I need, why we call, why we need to do calculation, this is the one you have to, you have to determine because we are not using the accessometer control because we are using the total control. Why are the, all these CM come from? It is actually from the machine itself, like the jaw face, you know, from the uh, all the assembly, the clock load cell itself, uh, and the connector and so on, which is actually created CM. That's why they need to know all this value and we have to determine the machine stiffness, which is the one you have to verify to determine what are all these values, and then make sure it's actually not more than 1% if you're using A2, okay? If you're using A2, A1, then you do not have this issue. You do not have this issue. But A2, you have to make sure the machine signal should not more than 1%. Then how you to verify this one? You have to apply this formula, okay? You have to apply, and then you determine if there are anything more than 1%, then you have to do a correction. You have to do a correction from the machine. Okay, if it is using A2 method. Huh? Okay, we go, after we're going through all these things, we understand the, uh, uh, the uh, most of the part, like just now, the uh, 
the range and strain rate available and so on. And also we are talking about A, the A2, why is the machine stiffness? Another one, I think most of the researcher, uh, when I see a lot of researcher or even some of the research uh, uh, paper, they do, you know, they do, because of the uh, accessometers are very sensitive and very costly. And they are actually most of the time, they, after the U point, they remove the accessometers. They won't continue, continue anymore. I mean, once you remove the accessometer, then they'll continue again. This is the case, you can do that as well. But you have to be very careful because when you look at look at this graph, when you remove the device, okay, you can see the whole load will be moved forward, upward, they will not go forward. Another one, you can actually change the source. You can change to using the cross head, then you don't use accessometer, which is actually, if you, for me, if I look at it, I'm not a candidate. I would suggest you can actually test until the, not fracture, but you test until the maximum load, if possible, where you can get accurate result, because otherwise you have that issue. And for example, look at this graph. Okay, you yeah, look at this graph, and this is the one that you can see. From the graph, you can see the one mark is circle, red circles. This is actually to change the accessometers to machine cross head. Okay, to change the machine cross head. And you can see the load are different. This is actually, you can see the errors. Huh? When you look at it, you say, hey, it's not a lot. But you look at the figure, you look at in researcher, we are talking about true value. And the value, it could be more than 10%. And that can be a very huge, that is actually can be very uh, huge impact. Can be huge impact if some of the load are very small. That's why we have, we are still, for, for our case, I'm still recommended you go to the maximum load. But we don't test until fracture because accessometer are expensive, and then it's very fragile. If you test a fracture, you can be spoiled. That's why most of the time in ISO 6692, they do recommend you after you can. They will recommend when you are up to the maximum load, drop by 0 0.5%, 0 .5%, you can actually stop it. Because actually that is actually a really max, you get a maximum load. But fracture, you can, you want to do under fracture, you can possibly can do that. You actually do the marking manually. Then after you remove the accessory, you can continue load until fracture, then you can measure manually using all the fracture. But you see in a lot of latest construction materials, uh, test method, they don't test a fracture because they actually refer to uh, maximum load or AGT, which is actually the elongation at maximum load because fracture for them is not, it, it doesn't, it's not important because that one already collapsed. They doesn't want to collapse. You want to know the hard, what is the distance, uh, the, the deviation between the U point and the maximum load, okay? What is the distance then? What, how this, uh, the, the, the ratio where you can do the, the hardening, you know, the ratio of the hardening. Okay, for this case, you can see when you remove access meters, actually, they will cause an error, which is actually good like camera. Okay, and move forward. For this experiment, for this, uh, you know, for this uh, experiment, I will using this man's, uh, this specimen, which is actually from the uh, uh, SDMPA and pinhole method, which is actually standard steel specimen, and this is a dimension. Then you look at the left-hand side, there's a test parameters. I have limit A11, A22, which is actually you can see what is the speed. And the sample gauge length is actually 50 mm. And this is the one I also need to highlight a lot of actually, uh, because I I meet many of the students where they're doing the test, they send the samples, they don't notice that actually the specimen pressure is very important, especially some of the, some of the spec dimension has mentioned with the plus minus, uh, for example, the gauge length, plus minus, we're talking about 50 mm, plus minus 0 0.1. This is meant to be very accurate because I'm referring to they're checking on the strain rate. They are all the strain that have to determine from this part. It's not the total, okay? And also the area wide, uh, the area and also the thickness uh, is also important. You have to make sure that the tolerance you have to be controlled. For this case, uh, I'm using 12.5 plus minus 0 0.2 and 50 plus minus 0 0.1. This is actually the total gauge length. And this is my test parameters for this uh, for this uh, studies. And you can see how we're going to change rate is I'm using the gauge length of uh, 50 mm, but the parent is 57, which is I can just like I mentioned that if you determine of the U strength, you can notice that I'm using the accessometer control. When after the U strength, which is RP 0.3, then I change rate, I change to cause rate control, which is actually the speed will be changed differently. You can see this is what the speed is. For the for example, the A11, A22, 
This is actually I'm using the A1 is actually accessibility control. And second speed I'm changed to after the after the view, I'll change to process control, which on the range is two. It meaning that I'll start at 0.21 mm per minute for the uh, up to the use strength. After the use strength, which is after the 0.3 output strength, I change the speed to 0 0.855. And the rest similar to other things. They need for one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm using two range. But I also do one range because why I A23 and A24. This using the clauses control. Please, I also notice a lot of students also using the uh, single rate control. They don't use two rate, only single rate. That's why I also do the study. I also do the experiment here. And I also using single rate, which is at the two times the power of negative three and Range two on the uh, open corset at 6.7. Okay, which is the speed at 6.84 mm per minute and 32.94 mm per minute. This is my, this is my test parameters and the specimen here. And you can see I move forward. You can see this is the general curve. This is the one, the first curve you can see if I'm using single rate. Okay, single rate, you can see the rate, just one rate. They don't have two rate. The first curve and second curve is only single test strain rate. Eh? When you see the second curve, okay, this is the two strain rate. The first one and second two, you can see the rain base will be two strain rate. One first rate and followed by second rate. You can see that immediately for first one is a bit slow, okay, a bit low, then you can go very high speed, which is actually on. We are using the stress versus time, okay, versus time. You can see the difference. Huh? Single rate is just like normal stress strain curve, huh? but you're looking at the uh, two swing rate, you can see completely different. Huh? That is actually we have to determine how to determine what is the difference between the single and uh, two swing rate. And this is the result that I get. Okay, from the uh, A from the uh, test model that I'm given, and then this is the result I give. Uh, I, I'm obtained from the from the samples. You look at the stress strain curve for the, all the samples, okay? Therefore, all the samples, you can see there's not much difference, but you can see some of the things are a bit longer in terms of the strain rate, and some are very short, okay? Some are very short. That is how I want to discuss about this strain rate. Why are we going to select the strain rate huh? and the, the effect? The effect of the strain rate, huh? Okay, we are, I have summarized. You yeah, look at the graph. This is the sample, but as I mentioned, I don't test until you fracture. I only test until the load drop by zero, about 5%, then I stop it. Okay, you can see this is the swing data, the, the speed that I'm using A11, A202, A11, and A23. Meaning that I'm using first one, you are using the uh, accessometer control, and then second, I'm using accessometer, but range one and range two. Okay, you can see the difference. Let's see the first graph, uh, the first three samples, then I'm using all the accessometer, extension, uh, accessometer A1 range one and except for the second uh, second speed huh? uh, the change speed huh? okay, i'm using a two two three four you can see from this graph from these three you can you can notice that huh? the sample are much longer for the second and third one okay the first one is very very short uh, that is not as long as the, the other one similarly for the a12 for this three as well okay the, the A12, A23, and A12, A24 are longer. Okay. Of course, if this is actually the uh, the sample, actual samples. And I'm looking at, let's see on the uh, actual uh, statistics, statistics value. Huh? We are interested to in look at this value. Okay. You can see my result is actually stress strain and the test rate. Huh? I'm using the stress rate. You can notice that huh? if I'm using the low rate and low range and then low range. Huh? The value for the strength, the tensile strength is higher, but very low. If you low rate, uh, the use set are low, but you get higher in a uh, tensile strength. When you go for second one, you can see I'm still using low. Any one one, but you can see the eight, the we are bit higher speed for the second one. The tensile strength become lower. Alternately, for the third one. The same slow rate, you can do x one, two, x six, two, x seven. But you can see the thing was dropping, okay? You can dropping, meaning that for the a one two the same. If I'm using a one two and I use two uh, a two two, or the change speed to lower speed, and the tensile strength are highest. If uh, second speed I change to high faster, and the tensile is lower and lower. 
okay, a lower and lower. Meaning that uh, from if you are using two strain ray, the different are diff the, actually you can see the different are huge difference between the higher speed on the second range, okay, on the second range uh, strain ray. Okay, and we go for next. We can go for another one. Look at the uh, strain at maximum load, which is actually we are talking about AGT. We can see from from the uh, this strain, you can see much clearer of this part. Get okay, the strain rate in percentage. Huh? If you are using a lower strain rate or lower speed, uh, the strain rate, huh? you can see my extension are lower as compared with the highest. But you can see it's not even. The strain rate for the strain at maximum of HET yeah, is actually will be slightly different. But you know, on the lower, when you go to second one, A23, it will be higher. But you go faster, it becomes dropping down again. Similarly, for this case as well, you can see I use very low rate, but the strain are very low. But you go to second speed, is higher. But when it comes to the high, the higher speed, it becomes dropping down again. Okay, it's dropping down again. This is actually this is referring to the uh, strain rate, huh? and we are looking at the test time. Uh, this is the most critical one. If I using the A11 at very slow speed, you can see I take about 42 minutes to complete the test as compared to 37 minutes. If I using very slow rate, and if I using a bit faster, you can see 11 minutes, 7, 4, 7 minutes, 5 minutes, and so on for perform a test. You can see this is actually created a huge error. You can see the difference between the time with the test time. Huh? You're using the different strain rate. Okay. Then we move a little bit forward and you can look at the uh, for this for this case, I'm also using another study we call it coefficient of variations. And this is the formulation I'm using. And this is how we determine. You can see the variations uh, uh, in terms of percentage. For the A11, you can see the variation for this uh, uh, the green color is actually for AGT, yeah? strain rate is about 11%. And we're talking about the uh, strain, strain of maximum load is 1.87 as compared and also the U strain is 4.0%. You can see for the uh, strain, the, the strength or the strain, uh, they're quite consistent in terms of for the CV value uh, as compared with the, uh, uh, call it the AGT or the strain value. You can see that heat there will be a, a much higher in terms of variations. Okay, in terms of variations, and also the strain rate. Comp, uh, th there's another thing we need to highlight also about the strain rate control. If you and also we are Doctor talking about strain rate control because just now we are talking about strain rate. How why strain rate is so important? You can see the difference and so on. And we when during the strain rate control, they also have any issue. This is actually strain rate control. You have to make sure that the strain rate control group are very important because this is what is expected. But when we do observe, you might see the thing is very fluctuation. That's why you need to do some appropriate training like feedback and so on. Like you can see, this is a curve. They might have the inconsistency if you don't have tuning properly and you cause an issue okay that one if you're using strain rate control is important huh? that is a problem on the strain rate control and secondly on the strain rate control also very important that the point of slippage huh? you can cause slippage huh? which is actually you look at this graph huh? if you don't attach because we are using the a1 huh? that's why the access center had to be play the appropriate night edge and also the uh, you know, the, uh, the attachment attached on the spencer on the gauge length are uh, also important alignment, the seat, and also for the uh, the gauge length. But most of most of cases, as I mentioned uh, early, don't go for too short uh, specimen. If you possible, goes for a longer one. That's why you can see. If you possible, 20 mm is recommended or above. Um, don't go for too small, like 12.5 or so, unless specimen is not allowed. Then you have no choice. In most, in most of the cases, I would recommend 50 or even longer if possible. You will have sufficient samples uh, for accurate results. Mr. Ang, Mr. Ang, okay. yeah. uh, uh, I can see that the, the graph is uh, producing some error, right? Due to the extensometer was slip. So, uh -huh. once the for research, maybe for research for undergraduate or postgraduate, right? Once yeah. the extensometer slip, then that's mean the result is not uh, valid. Lah. 
Is that true? Oh, it's not valid. It's not valid. Then, and we, have then we, have to, we, we have to we have to retest again. We have to retest again, right? You have to retest yeah. again. And also, you have to make sure that the tension, uh, the clamping or the gauge length had to be sufficient tension. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you don't have a sufficient tension, you can cause sleep. Or they are not using appropriate night edge. Some of them, you should, that round, you should using V. And using flat, then you have to use the edge, uh, the night edge. Okay? Or sometimes you might do a sharp edge, might be possible, you have to use 3.9 edge. So, in, so that you can achieve more appropriate, yeah, more contact uh, to ensure that the thing to minimize the sleep. This means the gripping. The this means the, the, the gripping for the sample must be properly tight. Eh? Yep. Like that. Correct. Um, Correct. Maybe some uh, our participants, they have question. maybe they can type on the chat, chat uh, from the web, right? They can, yep. they can be asked. Uh, okay. Can, can you can then, yeah. Yeah. Can we continue again? Like, for example, some of the samples we do have, if the necking actually outside the gauge length, then you have a different result. This happened if you're necking outside of the gauge length, and I do understand because sometimes students, you know, I do I have age time ask them why you use this dimension. He said, no, I just follow the some research, previous research researcher doing that. Don't do that. You have to refer to standards. The standard are given very clear line. You just follow the dimension. And if you want to ensure very correctly, you should do some simulation to make sure that whether this dimension is suitable for these materials. Because make sure that they're breaking within the gauge line, not outside the gauge line. Let's just like, for example, recently I went to one of the universities when the uh, sample is supposed to be 50 mm, but they put it on the cage length at the 20 mm. That's why you can see the uh, necking is outside the cage length. Then you have a different result. Your U strength or even the, uh, you know, the uh, strain definitely is going to be out. It's not be accepted. Okay. That's why correct G gauge length are very important. Okay. And sample preparation also important. And try to have a, a uh, dimension according to specifications I has mentioned and the tolerance. There must be a reason why you have to follow the uh, dimension. Okay. And also we are talking about the uh, if you rate increase, as I mentioned that don't increase uh, the point that you are going to take. For example, you want to take 0 0.2. Yeah, it's fine. Just like for my experiment, um, if I change rate at 0 0.2 because I only take 0 0.2. I don't take 0 0.3. But I don't take 0 0.3 uh, after 0 0.2. That's why I change my rate. Unless I want to take 0 0.5, then I will change rate at 0 0.6 or 1%. Okay? And this is the one, for example, this is a change you can see that will be different because uh, I'm actually concerned about maximum. Run. That's why this is change rate actually is recommended. Now, but make sure what you want, you have to determine yourself. And note for this case, okay, um, this, this is one example I need to highlight as well. Uh, for 6692, you're talking about the, um, for example, some standards have given very clear, for example, EN2001 or uh, part one, uh, which is aerospace series uh, 2005. They are given very clear. They are telling that why is the strain need to be used. This is not like 6692. They give you very wide range. That's why you have to determine what is the range that you're going to use. For this, for example, EN202 are very clear. You have to given you the, you have to use the strain rate at 0.5% per minute is preferred. Then you have to use it. Or the 6692 also mentioned that they are keep recommendation, you should use the recommendation speed and to define. If the results are abnormal, then you will change to slower. Okay, to change the slower rate. Okay, and also that is also a recap for the A1. Now, what is the benefit of the A1? Is actually using the accessometer control. Is first of all, you will achieve the reproducibility and proof strength test result. Machine to machine or repertory to repertory because they are using the accessometer, the control editing from accessometer. But important that accessometer have to be, uh, have to be calibrated. I think we have to be at least class one, okay? Class X accessometers. And number two, you can important actually obtain the comparable and repeatable result and also simple control because you're using the everything is actually uh, server control by the machine, it's not your memory control, all right? But the disadvantages is using uh, using the A1 method is actually accessible. Have to be uh, firm, okay? Don't no slippage, and then they will cause like the you know slippage or they cause some the uh, jumping or un unlinear curve, okay? And also they can cause some safety safety limit. Uh, you might be coming up 
that's why you have to take note as part as for this part as well. And also A1 method, uh, actually material have U point or U discontinuity, or they have a uh, U point that actually other close to control can be behaved erratically, uh, where you can go up. That's why uh, this is not recommended for material B, U discontinuity. That's why I have to be called, I have to be uh, take note on this part as well. And also the time are increased if you're using the A1 control. Basically, and also the parameter of the proportion or the the speed control, you have to adjust, just as I mentioned, you need a tuning, okay? You get an appropriate tuning. And to recap for the P2, A2 uh, swing rate, what is usually swing is they call it a control speed rate, controls, uh, cross, uh, cross rate control, like the like this photo, it doesn't have any accessorimeter control using the machine control, where this disability is actually, they still can produce a reproducibility a machine to machine and level three, uh, and also the actually control B is actually quite simple and you don't have to you know worry about the straight exception and so on because actually it's straightforward huh? uh, swing control is very similar uh, similar if actually you want to determine the U strength you determine that is still fine but ensure that the extension is at the parallel line okay and the metrical is actually uh, is also good for the using the uh, U calculate uh, you U point and the disadvantage of using this actually the test timer uh, can be more than three times because actually the uh, extension is based on total ex for total extension is not the page on the cage length, uh, not the fixed length. Okay? And the compliance of the machine, as I just mentioned, that the stiffness and uh, this one you have to check the stiffness. What is this uh, stiffness value? Okay, basically this is the one I want to share, and we are come to the question and answer session. I don't know if uh, anyone have any question on this part and on my, uh, you know, my session so just now or my slide. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, now we have come to the Q&A session. You may ask uh, Mr. Ng any, any queries on the testing or topics uh, related to this uh, test rate on latest metallic tension, right? Anyone? No questions? Does anyone have any questions? Usually, Mr. Ang, uh, see, see waiting for the other participant to ask question. Usually, we, we set our sensor meters to the sample, right? And uh -huh. then we, we start the, right, the the sample for testing, and then we observe on the PC for the graph, right? Yes. Until 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 it reach almost to the UTS ultimate tensile strength uh, curve or peak. And then we pause the setting and then we remove the accessometer. Is that a correct way or any for any good uh, good uh, practice rather than that? No, I as I uh, think is actually is not because first of all, what result you are, look, you are looking at. For example, I for the materials like metallic, metallic testings, I'm mm. actually interested on the U strength and tensile strength. Okay. Maybe I also interested on the elongation of fracture. Okay, these are the three par common parameters. And what I to do is actually you can pause after you, but you remember uh, your maximum load tensile strength. You should be reached the maximum and then drop by more than 0.5% according to standards. Actually, for my practice, I actually stop at 5%. When the root at maximum drop by far more than 5%, then I stop it. Actually, the sample is not break. It's still fine, but because I really get the tensile strength and the use strength, I'm using the uh, accessometers, and the accessometers still stick on the uh, on the specimen. But okay. then the question comes back with the elongation. How are we going to measure the elongated fracture? Basically, elongated fracture you can do that as well, but you can do manually because I'm do I do not recommend using accessometers because you might damage accessometers. Meaning yeah. that I can do the marking on the 50 mm. For example, your cage length is actually 50 mm. I mark the 250 mm. 
Then I touch the accelerometer on the 50 mm. I can do a test until the maximum. I the machine stop. I can stop it. Actually, the graph you can just stop it. I don't. I I do not have to record anymore because the load already come down. Then the elongation I measure. I measure manually. Then I can determine, for example, after breaking, I can join back. I can measure what is the elongation like. For example, you get 50. Just now the case of 50. Then you join back. You notice that actually 55. Then it's 10 percent. You can calculate 10 percent because actually just uh we are don't say about very accurate because just you know a certain figure, but you won't be so bad because 50 and 55 you cannot be actually uh, get more than 10 percent. It's not possible no? or 0 0.5 percent error. No? Normally your marking is also important and you're using the caliper. Huh? A caliper they can get actually quite precise. We're talking about 0 0.1 mm at least accuracy. That's why you measure huh? your error could be 0 0.1 percent. 0 0.1 mm. Then if it overall that percentage is still low. For elongation, I think it's fine because actually you need they are only normally give you the minimum uh, elongation uh, at function. This is for example they actually elongation at minimum say 20%. Then you get about 22, but you have a 25 percent is fine because I'm not interested in 20 point something is not important because as long as I meet at least the 20, 20 percent because the Senate mentioned 20 percent, then I meet this, then it's fine. OK, but <laughs> but most of the cases, I think I'm still mentioned a lot of to, to students to look into the AGT value because AGT we are talking about elongation and maximum. That's more appropriate because the U, U and the yeah, maximum elongations, uh, that is more appropriate beyond to know what is the ratio between the U and maximum work because the U and tensile ratio, uh, and we can determine what is the, the, the total elongation and hardness part. That is more appropriate. That's better way, right? Yep. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, anyone have uh, questions? We ask to Mr. Ng. Maybe too hard for, the, for, for, for this section. Is there anyone actually doing the uh, metallic test, uh, testing now? Concrete, for example, maybe with some questions. Any questions? And the uh, the student must be very good. They know very well on this part on the swing swing rate. Maybe next time we have to extend to another title, Mr. Ang. Maybe next year. Yeah. Do, do share, let me know what the title that are you interested in. Maybe we can extend to hot tensile testing for the next topic. Yeah, we are talking about hot tensile or the uh, high temperature and ambient temperatures, or even talking about crit test. What is actually yeah. correlation between the uh, tensile, the ambient and the crit test, uh, the correlations. And of course, the go higher is actually time, uh, tensile or and been, and not many, not many people are conducting this uh, hot time site in Malaysia, right, Mr. Ah, yes, not many. That's right. Uh, because of the uh, facility is quite expensive and the uh, time consume and also yeah, the oops. way of preparations. And there are a lot of things to be uh, to prepared as well. For example, determining of the temperature is not on the chamber, it's on the specimen. That's why how you get the actual temperature on the specimen with the uh, uh, tolerance is also very challenging. We are waiting for any question from, from the participants. Uh, there's no questions. Uh, I'm sharing the feedback uh, QR code for feedback for improvement or uh, for next or uh, topics. Uh. So I see uh, Mrs. Shayo, I think I see one of the uh, 
Yeah. One, one actually, I'm asking a question. The, your, the question is the condition of the tensile test is normal at room temperature. Does this affect the samples? Basically, for metallic, the, the condition of testing is not OV or not significant. Doubt, doubt, if we can just, you know, because actually most of condition room, I think probably is around 20 to 28, right? It wouldn't affect, unless you can go to negative, lab, or else uh, in most of cases, it's not affect too much. Okay, in uh, ambient temperature, actually we are talking about from from the range between uh, 20 up to 35 percent uh, degrees C. This is actually it doesn't uh, affect much, except for samples such as composite uh, composite papers and some of the thin material, like for some films, they may a huge effect. They have to be controlled precisely. That's why, as I mentioned, I think Mr. Johan had mentioned that they need to condition sample the sample plastic up to 40 hours. If it was 7 mm and below, if you more than 7 mm and above, you might up to 80 hours. Just actually sensitive. Huh? That's why I hope I answer your questions. So it uh, also depends on type of sample, right, Mr. Polymer, yeah. we, have, we have to we have to uh, follow the requirement of STM D618 conditioning yeah. sample. Yeah, that's right. Um, they have to control about 23 plus minus 2 and 50 plus minus uh, 5. OK, you have to yeah. control. That's why plastic sample are critical. Huh? Mm -hmm. The ones following the standard. Uh, Mr. Johan, how about the concrete sample? Mr. Johan, usually you are running the sample for concrete. Concrete normally they they will put in the water for the curing, so they need to dry it before testing lah. So one maybe one or two hours before or one day before they have to dry the sample. Then then only when we can do the testing. Is this uh, there is no standard for the concrete uh, okay. concrete okay, uh, same as my steel lah. Okay, any more questions on the floor? If not, then I'm um, thank you very much for your time uh, listening to my, you know, the, the, the my presentations. Hope it's help. Hope it's help. Right. Okay, uh, before we end the sessions, this is a uh, Feedback QR code for improvement for next uh, title of a webinar, maybe next year. So, everybody, no questions. Thank you very much for jo joining today uh, webinar. So, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye. Thank you. Um,